A moment that I really loved in the meeting of Kate and Victoria Stramonger is Kate has always learned that likability is a big factor in her job. Risha tells me you're very persuasive. Oh, I don't know about that. Not like you, anyway. Kate, don't be cute with me. You have a talent, you own it. I could sell a scuba tank to a seahorse. I've always worked really hard to not come off as too strong or too cold or unlikable. And when you feel like you have all of this fire inside of you and that you so desperately want to just be able to release it, but you're self-conscious about it, it can be a very confusing place to operate from, particularly when you're making art. This is something we need to figure out. And the whiteboard is going to help us do that? All right, do not knock it until you tried it. This here is how I make all my work decisions. That explains so much. Mm -hmm. In this episode, we see Anne and Lionel come to the decision for themselves. And it was important for us to create a union where Anne and Lionel both were 100% certain that this was right for them. I've never seen an abortion scene be romantic. I think she's hungry. Mm, I'm hungry. Okay, do you want me to make eggs? I'm hungry for you, you idiot. At this point in Jenny's storyline, we're so hungry to see Jenny experience some repercussions. Jenny finally is now making an effort. She wants to be there for Ian. She wants to make him feel that she's supporting him. But as always with Jenny, she doesn't seem to see the bigger picture. Ian wants to be a screenwriter. He's finally having some traction with that. Usually when a character has an aha moment and they're ready to break forward, we see just that, we see them step forward. The irony with Jenny is she actually wants to take a step backwards. She wants to get back to the way they were in college. Generally, that doesn't work as easily. What are you up to? You're making me nervous. Can you take a break, please? I can do, I'm on a roll. I'm finally driving in the lane I was supposed to. I'm a goddamn salesman. For the character of Frankie, we wanted to start trickling a storyline through the end here where we could watch the unraveling of someone who's experiencing severe depression. When she gets into selling items, we start to identify that what we thought was just potentially eccentricity is actually someone who's truly unstable. We made a few decisions in this. Frankie's actually wearing the same wardrobe for the last three episodes. One of the key factors in identifying someone experiencing depression is that they stop taking care of themselves. Seeing her in the same clothes over and over again, you start to feel something wearing on her. So when she actually sells the house, it's something you already knew deep inside watching this character, and now you're witnessing its breaking point. 